Hey, hey, hey. It's five o'clock. It's time for Watch Me Work, where we're going to get some work done today. It's April Fool's Day. No fooling. We're going to get some work done. Uh, I'm SLP. We've been doing this show for like 14, 15 years. We started out in a theater down the street from the public theater, and then we moved into the lobby of the public theater. And then when COVID came, we moved on to Zoom. And here we will be, hopefully, forevermore. And we are embraced, we've been embraced by HowlRound the whole way, New Work Department at the Public Theater. Um, yay, we love the New Work Department at the Public Theater. We're going to work together for 20 minutes. And then after that, if you wish to ask me a question about your work, your creative process, keeping in mind that we don't have time for you to present your work, but we do have plenty of time to talk shop if you would like to do so. Zoe from New Work department is going to tell you how to do it. Sorry, New Work Development. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, thank you, SLP, and welcome to another great session of Watch Me Work. After the 20-minute work session, um, if you have a question, please go ahead and use the raise your hand function um, down in your reactions button, and we'll get a nice queue of questions going. And then uh, from there, we will call on your name and ask you to unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Without further ado, we're going to get started. Okay, here we go.
Okay, okay. Anyone have any questions, anything? They want to talk about any shop questions? Here I am. Yes. If you have a question, please use the raise your hand function. We'll call on you. Thank you, Rocky. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Dan. How are you? Hey, how are you? Good. Um, okay, my question this week is um what do you do when you want to meet characters and people that live outside of the place your imagination usually travels to? Get a ticket and go there. <laughs> Get a ticket and go where they are. I mean, you you know, you want to meet characters outside of where places where your imagination usually travels like Say you usually write about, let's just pretend, you know, I mean, I know your your work is more thrilling than this, Rocky, but you say you usually write about characters who live in uh, rural, um, rural uh, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And you want to write about characters who live in Miami. So, you know what I mean? So you got to get to know Miami, you know, I mean, go online, look it up, maybe take a visit there, get to know where they might be from. Is that... Then that's really vague, um, because I don't know exactly what you're what you're meaning. What do you what do you think? Just get to get familiar with the environment that you want to get familiar with, and maybe you'll get some insights as to what your characters from that place might be doing or saying. Or uh -huh. not or is it not a question of location? Um, it can be. Um I just got to this part where I realized I have to meet a bunch of new people. And they can be anyone. So oh, maybe I'll take a journey. Yeah, they can be anyone. So so you're wanting them to be different from the people you usually write about. I think so. I didn't I didn't I just got to this point. So maybe it could be people some people I know, some people I don't know, but because I realize it's like a lot of different people. Oh, it just kind of seems like it can be anyone. And now I'm like, who? It's just it just seems like an invitation to meet some new people, I guess. Uh huh. Do you live near a, a subway? Where do you live? I don't know where you live. In, I'm sorry, you cut out. Where, where did you say? In New Haven. Oh, OK, so there's public transportation in New Haven, right? Um. Not really. Yeah, there is. That doesn't sound. There's the Metro North, right? Yeah. Okay, well, you could you could ride, take a little ride, a little bit of a ride on the Metro North, a couple of stops, you know, to and just look around, look around and say, who are these people, you know? And if you don't ordinarily do that, those are you're gonna be your mind is gonna be flooded with images of people that you don't ordinarily sit next to if you don't ride the Metro North very often. And just say and 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 select a handful of those folks, uh -huh. you know, to base your characters on. That might be fun. See what the universe provides for you on any given day. Uh -huh. it's April Fool's day to day, people. Oh my goodness, what a good question! And you get a ride on the Metro North. What could be better? True, I need it. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Hi, Jillian. Um, you can unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Hi, Toby. Hi, how are you? Good. Good to see you. I also have to say, shout out to Siobhan, who I went to theater school with. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh, um, my goodness. <laughs> oh, she's next. But anyway, uh, I was just in New York, and I saw Sally and Tom, so oh. that was excellent. I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It means a lot. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. So my question is, I'm in this process. Okay, the, okay. So what I'm doing is, I am working on the character development and I'm writing things out, and it's feeling like it's interactive and it's immersive. But my question is, how do you write outside of format? So right now, I'm listening to the characters and I'm communing with them, and we're having our little kikis, and I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what. Or, you know, I don't want to get caught up on format, but I want to keep doing work. But I know at some point I'm going to have to commit to format to get this done. So I guess, how do you think about that when you're like living with the story 
and you haven't quite, you know, you're moving forward in it, but you don't really know the best format for it, or you feel like it could be multiple. You mean format like I'm I'm not quite sure, but and I, I know what you're talking about. Format like what do you mean? Like Is a play the... versus a screenplay versus oh a oh oh, versus oh I see game. I see I see yeah. right sure 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 okay I get it I get it I get it so you ask yourself so how do you you look in your mind's eye how do you see it do you see it on a stage? Right now I see it as an interactive like immersive piece. So I see it as just being like the people are in the space with the characters mm -hmm. and communicating mm -hmm. with them. So mm -hmm. that's how I see it. Great. Um, I'll write that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, if that, you know, you get to, you get to call it like you see, you get to write it like you see it. So mm -hmm. if you see it as an interactive piece, then write that and just, you know, start writing a little bit at a time. Like what's the story? What do the characters want? The, the questions in my experience, are the same regardless of the format, right? Yeah. So it could be a novel, it could be a play, it could be a screenplay, it could be an episode of television. The questions are the same. What do the characters want? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. you know? What's the story? Yeah. You know, how do these scenes forward the story? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I've been asking those same questions and, and I started like dedicating to format and then I said, nope, it exactly what you said it's the same questions regardless of what the format is so I think the reason I'm I'm at this format crossroads now is because now I, I don't know where to take it you know am I taking it to my screenwriting group am I taking it to my theater people uh but maybe I don't need to get there yet maybe I just need to but, but if you see it as an interactive thing that you it sounds like you take it to your theater people or your interactive group if you have an interactive group yeah you know okay yeah, and not, and not not sweat it too much. The main thing is just to take it somewhere, and start writing. And if you find it's wrong in the wrong place, and take it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, right. no, none of the groups are going to crush it if they're good groups. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, yeah? definitely. Yeah. Okay, sounds like fun. Thank you. Great question. Thanks. Thank you, Jillian. Hi, Siobhan. You can unmute whenever you're ready. Uh, hi, Siobhan. You're muted. You're muted. I there thought you I'm muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I am wondering if you have ideas or strategies about, um, I have two commissions right now that are theater for young audiences, and I don't only write theater for young audiences, but have to be working on two at the same time. So I'm wondering, do you have ideas or strategies you use to keep the characters in their own world and not interacting with each other when you don't want them to like and influencing each other when you don't want them to especially if they are sort of similar in demographic right I'm in two worlds of similar demographics but I don't I want to really make sure that I keep them separate but I'm just looking for ideas on like how to do that right I just just be specific about their story you know I mean if one character is there you know, they, again, they live in rural Minnesota, be specific about whatever they're going through. And they're just trying to decide whether or not they're going to buy a new farm to plant chronic to make money. That's one story. You know, I mean, I don't know. And the other folks are living in Miami and deciding whether or not they want to spend the day at the beach. Be really specific about what they're doing. Really specific about their story. Really, I mean, there and there might be some, some, cross fertilization and but that's okay it's your work so you're allowed to do that and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that especially if you're writing two things at the same time you know but try to get really really specific or work on getting really really specific thank you you're welcome good question Hi, Lisa. Um, you can unmute yourself. Hello, how are you? Hey, Lisa, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, thank you. Um, it's nice to be here. I am working on this play, um, which skips back and forth in time, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, and I realize that I'm kind of out skipping myself in time. 
in that um, I, I guess I'm basically asking for organization hints. Mm -hmm. I don't always like to write in order because sometimes I think I'll, I'll, I'll say today I want to write this scene and I'll write that scene mm -hmm. or, you know, and the next day I want to do that, but I'm getting caught up in my own enthusiasm for a nonlinear screenplay and, um, or sorry, playwright play. So I, I'm wondering if, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm, there might be some technique that I'm kind of missing or that I'm not doing this right, or I've got the index cards on the wall kind of thing, and I'm moving them around. Um, but maybe there's something else. So I thought I'd ask. Well, wow, that's a great question. So you've got the index cards on the wall, and you said you're moving them around? Yes, because the play jumps around in time, and sometimes this scene emphasizes or adds to a scene that went before. It's not entirely chronological. Or I don't think I want it. To but be. the scenes are the scenes go in a certain order. Eventually they will, yes. Right now they're just kind of all swirling around. So you might want to just put them in an order that makes sense to you right now. And write them in an order. I mean, that's you said you might be missing something, an organizational tool, you know. Time, even even for the moment, is a great organizational tool. And you, you can use it instead of say, I want to be so free of it that I'm disorganized. Yeah. Yeah. And if we weren't working for 20 minutes, you know, we'd still be working or we wouldn't have shown up at all. Or what day is it? I don't know. You know, so why don't we employ what we like and what's going to help us and don't worry about the rest. You want it to jump around in time eventually. Great. But you can decide just for the purposes of writing what the order is. Is that Makes sense. And then you can move it around as you become more solid with it. Um, I keep talking. Yeah, I, I think I, I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want this to sound hyper indulgent or anything, but mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I know that, you know, scene B should go between A and C, but I don't feel like writing scene C and I decide I want to write scene G instead. Right. That's fine. So, but you, on your wall, you have them in writing order. Right. In writing order. In an order. Right. So just, or in, or in the order that they would appear in the play eventually for now. Right. You have that order established. Mm -hmm. and, and write the, and write the ones you want to write in the order that you feel like writing them, keep them in the, the play order, you know what I mean? Keep them in the order they will appear eventually in the play for now. Write them in the order you want. And you have to be okay with being confused sometimes. Okay. You know, but just when you when you feel confused, just look back at the line and go, okay, right now I feel like writing G. I don't feel like writing C right now. I feel like writing G, write G. And then if you feel confused, be okay with that and just look back at your timeline if you will your 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 storyline if you will you know mm -hmm. and that will perhaps give you a sense of yeah yeah i know what i'm doing I, i'm on the right track even though i like to jump around um yeah ju ju and just try to keep going that's the thing i here we are going give you the same but just keep going that's what I, I want you to do just continue um if you feel confused uh write the next scene if you don't feel like writing scene C, write G, write R, write scene X. It doesn't matter. Write something, you know? Is that, yeah. Because you want to be free. And with the freedom, if you free yourself from chronology, you're going to become a little confused. And you're going to have to be okay with that. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. All right. Good. I'll, I'll take dwell in my confusion. Yeah, just tape tape them to keep them taped to your wall. That's a great a uh, great a strategy you already have. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lisa. Emmanuel, are you from France again? Are you back? I haven't seen you in ages. Yes, I'm back. 
Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you. It's very nice to be back. So, thank you. Hi. Thank you for back. Hey, Grace. Uh, you can unmute whenever you're ready. Um, hi. I'm sorry. I feel like this might be a bad How question. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. Wait, do you remember me? <laughs> it's been so I don't know why I asked that. I don't know. If, no, because I, I just feel bad because I haven't been here for a while. But I guess my question is kind of like, because one reason why I found like Watch Me Work is just because of like just your talks online and your videos. Because I also feel like you give like good life advice for like writers and stuff. So my question isn't specifically like about writing. But um, one reason I haven't been here is just because... I feel like lately I've just been like sort of like living life more recently. I don't know, like just like really getting to like know myself better and to just, you know, do a lot of things to like really like take care of myself and like to like grow as a person and grow in community and like, you know, start new relationships and things like that. But sometimes I worry because it kind of makes me a little bit more like behind on my work or maybe in terms of even my own creative work, which right now in my life, I just mostly kind of do on the side because I'm like still like a full-time student and I don't necessarily like have a creative writing major um it makes me like a bit behind and sometimes I feel a bit a bit guilty if I'm like putting off time that I could be like working and developing projects to sort of just like you know like live life so I just wanted to ask for just general advice for striking a balance or like how even important is it to like still like you know really develop yourself, especially like as like a young writer to like I don't know like do you have any advice any thoughts I'm sorry no, 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 it's such a beautiful it's such a beautiful question because I of course I want you to to have a, a beautiful life you know a beautiful whole life and be be joyful and 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 enjoy yourself and I want you to when you get to be as old as I am or even older older you look back and you go wow I'm proud of myself you know so I want that for you I mean I want that for everybody you know you I think that's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to look back on even the, the last year and go, wow, we know well done like that, whatever you do. So you want, you do want to take care of yourself and do self care things and meet new people and, and enjoy yourself. And you want to put in a little time for your writing. In my experience, writing is like, um, Grace, do you have like a, 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 a savings account in the bank? at the bank it doesn't have to be a brick and mortar bank but do you have like a do you put money aside uh i mean yes <laughs> i try to that's okay i'm not I'm, i don't mean you know like if you put away a dollar a day like that i'm not talking about like mutual funds or anything like a dollar a day if you put away like a dollar a day doing a little writing in the morning or at a specific time every day is like putting a little money aside in the bank mm. that's also, in addition to meeting friends, doing, you know, whatever self-care things, maybe spa dates or hanging out with friends that, in social situations, that is great. And if you're thinking about maybe, maybe you'd like to have a life in the arts, let's just say, or a deeper spiritual life, you'll want to do a little bit of your work every day. Just a little, just a smidgen. So put that on the, if you have a plate, you know of lovely things that you do for yourself. Remember that that's the kind of self-care, you know, the, an artistic process is also a form of self-care. Mm. But I also will say that I feel like the content of my work is not like as good because I'm like, because I, I feel like, you know, the place that like, I feel like I need to go for my writing and my work is maybe I don't know, maybe it's not, um, I don't know, maybe sometimes when I'm too involved in like affairs of like my actual life, it makes it harder for me to get involved into the life of like my characters and my work because I do feel like it's very like sort of spiritually and like mentally like heavy and exhausting sometimes. Um, but then I also think that like, you know, um, sort of like, even uh, the experiences of my daily life and just like exploring more and like doing more with my life will eventually give me more stuff to like write with. But right now, like sometimes it doesn't even feel like it's worth like making too much of an effort because I, I just like don't like what I'm writing. Like, it feels like I'm doing like very stupid things. Like, well, I'm not like stupid, but like very like menial tasks. Like, 
uh, maybe like very practical, like planning of stories and like not really, um, really working with like the language, for example, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's good to put a little bit aside, even if you're considering, you're feeling like it's not high quality stuff. It's because you're getting in the habit of giving to yourself in one of the deepest and most beautiful ways you can. It's like, do you do uh, yoga? Yeah, I do. Great. Do you do meditation? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So those are two excellent habits that you already have. So you have a daily meditation practice. You have a daily, maybe a daily yoga practice. You, you also have a little tiny, small, 10 minutes of daily writing. You want to get in the habit of giving that to yourself and it will grow and flower. Just that, that's all. Just add that to the wonderful things that you're doing. That's all. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thanks, Grace. Hi, Rebecca. Can you unmute yourself? Hey, Rebecca. Hi. Hi, SLP. How are you? I'm well. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> um, I have a section of the manuscript that's that's a mess, oh. and uh, and it's it's a mess because first of all, because my great grandfather keeps interrupting and like wanting <laughs> wanting me to do something, which um, I'm I'm not accomplishing and uh I never met my great grand great grandfather so um but it's also I mean some of it is a space time problem some of it is how much of me is in there that's part of the the grand great grandfather problem but I've been I started reading um there's a book about W.E.B. Du Bois and the First World War. And I started reading it because of the current number of wars. And I get to the second chapter and there's the name of someone who was lynched, who was probably a relative by marriage mm. um, in 1917. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I, I'm feeling kind of caught in this, um, I'm feeling like I'm caught in something where I need to sort of balance what these stories mean <laughs> and and move along. And and the space time problem is is it's a section about the black press and the mm -hmm. as opposed to the white press and reporting on lynchings and such. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I'm not. I, I mean, some of this is just kind of saying it out loud that it's it feels it just feels very odd to keep tripping over these these things and um in with my great grandfather, I thought that I had the genealogical information, and I realized it was wrong oh. um and it wasn't because he was always lying about his age it was because nobody was actually reading his age right. Oh. He lied about his name, which may, which was the whole thing. And then oh. figuring that out, or maybe, who knows? It's like, maybe he had two, maybe two different enslavers and he had two different names. So it's like that. I get caught in these, you know, and the real issue is getting at, getting to the point where I can talk about the man who wrote about the main lynching in the book who wrote for a Kansas press because, and and Memphis didn't have a press at the time because, you know, Ida B. Wells been run out and all that. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm just, it's just, I'm, I'm just very frustrated with it at this point. And I printed it out for our time together. And I was just going through, it was like, this is a mess. <laughs> this is like, what, what, how do I get to this point? And I keep not feeling like I can get to the point about 
the internet. I'm sorry, my internet is unstable. That gets to the point about the journalists who I want to write about. And I don't know if it's just because of my need to explain history to people huh. <laughs> or um, my inability to figure out where the character that is me, I mean, this is, uh, this is nonfiction, but still it's not me, me. It's the person I'm in relationship to the material that's in, in the manuscript, me. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, that may make no sense, but. Um, it almost doesn't, but uh, just be, thank you. <laughs> I had to put on, I had to put on my smart cap there. Um, um, what is your, the, the character, you talk about the character who's not, not you, but the, the character in, in question, you're, what do they want? In that moment. You know, it's, it's, so there's me who will find a rabbit hole me, me, who will find a rabbit hole and go down it, mm -hmm. <laughs> given any opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the character that's me in this part of the manuscript wants to know where her great grandfather was born and why he went to Tennessee. Right. Focus on that. Because focus on what the character wants. Hold on, just stay away from any and all rabbit okay. hole. Um, because that it doesn't sound like the rabbit holes are helping right now, you know? So just you and you know, the idea is, you know, Rebecca, you're walking down the street or the the road, you see a rabbit hole, you go in. Oh shit, I'm in a rabbit hole, you say. You get out of the rabbit hole, you go walking down another street, you see a rabbit hole, you get in, you say, Oh shit, I'm in a rabbit hole. You're walking down the street, you see a rabbit hole. Guess what, Rebecca? Don't get in the rabbit hole. Don't go in the rabbit hole. You know it's a rabbit hole. Don't go in. Mm -hmm. Focus on your stay with your character because you're walking side by side her, the character in the in the work, right? And every time you go in the rabbit hole, you abandon her. You like mm -hmm. better things to do than figure out than help you get to where you want to go. I'm going over here. That's you know, that's that's you know. So stop doing that. Like, do the job. Mm -hmm. Stay with her. Don't go in the rabbit hole. The rabbit holes are full of sparkly lures and, you know, carrots or whatever they put in, you know, whatever's down there. Um, right? Stay with her. Say, I'm sticking with you. I'm not going to go in that rabbit hole. I don't care what's, I don't care if the rabbit hole promises the answers to, no. Stay with her. Stick with her, okay? Just every time you see yourself about to click on whatever it is that you think, mm-mm. Focus on helping her get what she wants. Remind yourself that that's your job right now. Your job is not to be Alice. Or mm -hmm. wasn't that the woman who went down the rabbit hole? Yes. I mean, she yes. had a good time, whatever, but you know, that's not your job right now. That's not your job right now. Where, why he went to Tennessee is central to the section. Okay. Trying so, to figure it out. So figure it out. So, fi so figure it out. Figure, walk around, just make that the central thing that you're thinking about like all the time. I can't figure it out. Mm -mm. Did you say you can't figure it out? Mm -mm. No, you're supposed to say, I know already, I'm just not listening hard enough because I keep going down these rabbit holes. I know, I know why he went to Tennessee, whatever. I know, I know the answer. I just have to keep listening. It's right here. I just have to keep leaning in. You have to hypnotize yourself into the, 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 the outcome that you want instead of hypnotizing yourself into the outcome that you don't want. Mm -hmm. This we know. Yes, yes, this is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's happened in other parts of the, the manuscript where all of a sudden it's like, oh, how come I, yeah. Yeah, so just do it now. You, you have, you've established that you have that superpower. Just use it here. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, it'll be fun. You'll, you'll get to hang out with your character full time. Stay out of the rabbit holes. You're not a rabbit. Yeah. Not all now. Right. 
Okay. Report All back, right. please, because you know we want to know. Yeah, yeah. I will I will let you know. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Please go and unmute yourself. Hi, Susan Murray. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? How's it going? Doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, so two weeks ago, two sessions ago, you shared about how water boils better when the lid is on. And oh, yeah. it really resonated with me. And I kept on thinking about it, especially when I have conversations with people about my work. I started to be more conscious about what I share, what I talk about. But I found it in practice, it's actually really hard to do because it's so easy to get excited and share a lot about the work while you're still in the creative process. Um, so I'm curious about in your practice, especially when you are in the myth of the creative process, do you set a personal boundary about how much you share with people when people ask about your work? Uh, when do you choose to share more information and when do you choose to be more brief? Yeah, that's a great question. And and this works for me, you know, some people, I mean, some people can only figure it out if they if they have what I call a celebration before they have the celebration. I like getting the work done and then having the party. You know, I like talking about it when it's more done than not. That's my personal. So that's why I give that kind of advice. But I set a very strict personal boundary. I don't tell people, you know, some my students ask me, my friends, what am I working on like that? I have piles of stuff that I'm doing that I don't talk about. Mm -hmm. I do find people though, a few people like my husband, you know, you know, you know, close people very close to me who hear every word, every line, every lyric from a song, every chord, bless their hearts for listening. But I don't tell, you know, people out outside of my house, my house, my bedroom and a half apartment, what I'm doing. No. No, I, I, if I, and I find that I can hear it better if it's just in my head, you know, mm. uh, when a play has, a, it has to have a workshop, then that's different. You have to disseminate scripts to people and you have to share and you, you have actors, wonderful amplifiers, and they tell, they give you their ideas and fantastic and producers and all that. Um, but until then, um, mm. I don't. Thank you. But I just want you to, I want you to develop. Also, it helps you develop the confidence in your own voice. You yes. know, because you get into a habit of encouraging yourself or have like your best friend or a really close confidant on your spouse or whatever, your partner, they're helping you encourage yourself. You know, you're building that up. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great question, though. Give a shout out. Ace, Ace is here. Carol's here. I just want to say hi to people. Oh, okay. Grace is back. But hi. Hi, Ace. Hi, Carol. It's good to see you. Good to see oh, you. Sorry. Are we allowed to ask more than one question? I just wanted to ask a follow-up question based on like some of the answers you gave after mine. But um, I guess what's one way that you can like, because you talked a lot about like intuition and stuff and like uh like listening to your own voice and also like you know sort of making sure you are like following following like a specific path like when you're really like working on a story working on your characters but what's one way that um we can like grow our intuition like as writers like or like one tip that you like to do like, yeah sure meditation practice is kind of the best thing you have one already meditation practice and a lot of times you just um it comes from listening Sometimes that means keeping your mouth closed and <laughs> hearing what you have to say, you know, hearing what's going on in your head and going, oh, you know, listening to your gut, which is your your other brain. You know, you, you all know that, right? If you don't have you heard that, look it up on the Internet. You've got, you know, things going on in your stomach area that are mirror or mimic the things going on in your thinking area. Um, Just start listening in, you know. If you hear yourself saying things like, oh, I'm never going to figure it out. I'm never going to figure it out. <laughs> you know, try to listen into what you're saying to yourself and try to work from there to to course correct, to encourage yourself, to give yourself courage. You know. Um, uh, and and enjoy your alone time. You know, alone time isn't lonely. 
Enjoy your alone time. Enjoy your lack of screen time. You know, if the first thing you do is wake up and you're looking at your, you know, your device or whatever, you're wonderful. We love technology. And you might want to try not looking at it first thing in the morning, people. First thing in the morning, you might want to sit in silence, even if you just sit up in, in bed or in your sleeping place and breathe in and say, wow, I'm so, I'm so glad to be here. You know, attitude of gratitude, that's another wonderful thing. Just walk around in your head and say, you know, mention things that you're thankful for. I'm thankful for Zoom. I'm thankful for watching me work. I'm thankful for this wonderful community. You know, just start to say things like that. You know, all that, all that woo-woo, new agey stuff that we sometimes laugh at, but it's actually, a lot of it is very helpful. You know, does that help, Grace? Um, yeah, I it really does. Yeah, I think part of the reason, ironically, why I haven't been like writing is just trying to do a lot of that and really build my practice because it really wasn't until like a couple months ago that I did start uh, working in a daily like meditation practice and yoga practice, but I also need to make sure that I'm finding time to physically do writing and kind of, you know, physically work with language and kind of remember like why I like started all of this stuff in the first place. Um, cause I do find that finding that practice like takes time. Um, but yeah. And it's also really interesting how like all of these like things are related, like, you know, the personal things that like one does in their own life, like meditation and all of that, like it all feeds back into like sort of like the language. So thank you. Yeah. It was super helpful. Thank you. Do you great. have a walking yeah. tip of the day or the week? <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. You do that. It's like the watch me work tip of the week, like a quote or something. Oh, no, but I, it's it's what we were. Some of the things we were talking about today that you know your creative practice is, in my uh, understanding, one of the best forms of self care. Your creative practice, whatever that is, you can be like some of us were choreographers. Some of us are writers, playwrights, poets, musicians. We, we like to just go for walks we or or we do, you know, competitive skiing or woodworking or whatever. Those things that you give yourself, um, you when you can look back on your day, when you can look back on your week and say, I did a little something for myself. I didn't spend my free time in front of the television, people. And I know there are a lot of good shows and we love our shows, you know, but uh, you want to you want to replenish the well. You want to give to yourself. That's very important especially in these times. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, we need Thanks. to stay strong. We need to stay open. We need to stay strong and open. It's six o'clock. It's six o'clock. It it's April Fool's Day. Uh, we love you. We're giving you love on April Fool's Day. No fooling. Lots and lots of love. I love this community. It's so joyous to me to be able to meet with you guys, uh, you all on Mondays at five o'clock. Thank you, New Work Development. Thank you, HowlRound.